Hello! Welcome to my weekly book review, and today I'd like to talk to you about Zombie by Joyce Carol Oates. Not that you could tell by the cover, but the name is there on the spine. Zombie by Joyce Carol Oates. Uh, this edition that I read and will be showing off is the Suntup Artist Edition, uh, which is a higher-end book, uh, very fancier than a trade edition, very nice, beautiful cloth binding. It is still available on suntup.press. But if you're just interested in the book itself, you can pick it up, a trade edition, for much cheaper, from any bookstore in the area. But anyways, you know, if you like what you see, you could go to suntup.press and get a copy of the artist edition for yourself. So, Zombie, despite the title, is not a book about zombies. This is a book about a serial killer. A fictional one, although he is very much inspired by Jeffrey Dahmer. There's even some Jeffrey Dahmer-style glasses that he shares in common with Quentin P., the narrator and protagonist of Zombie. And the zombie in the title is his endgame. It's his goal. Uh, the entire novel is presented uh, like journal entries, like uh, internal writings that Quentin P. Uh, is documenting for you, the reader. And uh, see, my name is Quentin P., and I'm 31 years old, three months. Uh, it's uh, he wants to create a zombie. Obviously not like a undead zombie, but more of the brain-dead zombie. He wants to create a brain-dead sex slave. Uh, and his method of doing so is through some uh, little bit of lobotomy. Uh, amateur lobotomy, in which, you know, he's going th with an ice pick through the eye, which I guess is kind of shown here through Laurel Hostler's illustrations. Uh, yeah, if you couldn't tell from the dust jacket, her her, her her illustrations are haunting, and they're creepy as hell, and it really kind of gets the feel for the novel. It's a very short read. This was like 160 pages, and I can see why it won the Bram Stoker uh, back in 95 for superior achievement in a novel. Um, stylistically, I mean, just stylistically, the publication... Uh, the Suntup edition here is, you know, left aligned on the left page, right aligned on the right page. You know, lots of spacing in the middle. Uh, I, I know that the trade edition, from what I've heard, has these crude drawings throughout as well. Those are his own little illustrations. You know, key to dad's car, actual size. Or a uh, an image of the clock in his room. We took the hands off because he's living outside, inside of time and outside of time. Uh, or the ice pick that he acquires for his lobotomies. Yeah, lots of crude drawings. Uh, and even more crude is the writing style. Uh, this is an unstable man, and it reads as unstable as he is. Uh, you'll notice there is lots of randomly capitalized words. Uh, you'll notice that when he refers to himself as QP, which is kind of like his other personality, his name is Quentin, last name is begins with a P. They never fully say what the P stands for, uh, but his serial killer alias is QP. Uh, so some people might be confused reading it, like sometimes he's referred to as Quentin, sometimes he's just referred to as QP. QP is kind of the serial killer inside of him. It is the, uh, you know, his alias that is uh, the real Quentin, if you will, not the Quentin he puts on for other people. Uh, he's a very peculiar man, doesn't like eye contact, uh, is very uh, kind of literal in his writing and uses a ton of ampersands, you know, yeah. and he denied it, and pretend, and his friends, and I'd slip in behind them and pretend. Like, it's just, yeah, lots and lots of ampersands. Uh, and it's a very frenetic style, uh, which is only amplified by Laurel Hostler's uh, illustrations. Uh, one thing I will say about the illustrations is that, uh, with the exception of, like, the cover art uh, and one illustration late in the book, I didn't feel they had, uh, they were, like, a specific scene, per se. This one's kind of a specific scene, because he's, he's talking about how uh, he has a dream, or he's envisioning uh, where he, is, uh, he has created a zombie, and they're falling asleep on each other's shoulders. Uh, the other ones are more just kind of feelings to accompany the book. It's not necessarily a specific scene, but just kind of a, a frenetic, chaotic darkness to it. And you know what? 
I am all for it because they are creepy as hell. <laughs> and the book is creepy as hell. This is classified as horror uh, because, I mean, it is about a serial killer. I wouldn't say the content of the novel is necessarily horrific uh, or scary. I mean, I guess it's horrific because, you know, he's trying to do lobotomies on these people and it's not going very well. Uh, so unsurprisingly, lobotomizing somebody in your bathtub is not the best way to create your zombie. And so, uh, oh yeah, there's a nice illustration about lobotomy. How about that? Um, and so uh, his victims are dying, and it is kind of horrific. Uh, there aren't too many that he talks to you about in the present. Uh, he talks about his victims from the past before he was uh, caught with a young child uh, in which uh, that is the incident that he refers to. Uh, he is caught with a young child, uh, still alive, and he, you know, is uh, gets a suspended sentence for uh, a little bit of little bit of sex crimes, little bit of a child endangerment sort of situation, and so now he's kind of back to the drawing board. Now he's the caretaker of what was his grandparents' house. Uh, it's now turned into like apartments, and he's detailing his plans to create a zombie. And yeah, I mean, there is there is somebody that he uh, has in mind that he encounters that he decides to make his zombie, and uh, it does go in a little bit of detail there. Uh, but I wouldn't say it's ultimately too graphic, uh, which I mean is kind of a weird thing to say about a book about a serial killer. But yeah, no, I, I wouldn't say it's it's too overly graphic. It's more graphic about his hard ons than uh, the actual murdering, uh, and it does show a transformation where he originally just kind of wants to create a zombie to kind of enjoying a little bit of killing near the end. Um, but yeah, I mean, he is a serial killer. I mean, he's a serial lobotomist, and most of those people he conducts lobotomies on, or at least in the past, uh, unsurprisingly, die. So in that regard, he is a serial killer. Um, I don't necessarily, up, up until the end as you see the progression of the character, I wouldn't say he's necessarily killing for the sake of killing. Um, but you will obviously see him go down a dark path. And it, But what really stands out about this novel is just how goddamn creepy it is. Like I said, the actions that, like, what's portrayed aren't exactly horrifying. The acts are horrifying, but the descriptions are not necessarily that horrifying. Excuse me while my camera freaks out over the cloth. It does not like cloth uh, covers, so I apologize for the absolute throbbing it's doing right now as I try to readjust it. Um, but what is what is horrifying about this novel is just Quentin as a character. It's like the guy that you could know. I mean, he seems almost kind of on the, on the, uh, the, the autism spectrum a bit, but it's almost like, you know, the people you run into in your life could very much be dark and twisted people. And I think that is the true horror of this novel. It's just, it's uncomfortable to read. His style is uncomfortable, but it's it's purposely done that way. And I think Joyce Carol Oates just knocks it out of the park. I don't know that I've read any other novels by Carol Oates. I've read a couple short stories by her. Uh, she had one that was in, it was actually called Stories, uh, which was a more whimsical tale about the 12 days of Christmas. And wow, this was... This was not what I was expecting. I mean, I went in knowing it was about a serial killer, so I guess it was what I was expecting. But I love the hell out of this. Uh, the overall package of the Suntup Edition is just superb for this. I like reading very nice quality books. This is, of course, signed by Laurel Hostler. Uh, excuse me, my camera doesn't know what's going on. Let's focus, buddy. Uh, signed by Laurel Hostler. There is a numbered edition which is signed by Hostler and Joyce Carol Oates. There's also a lettered edition, which is done up to look like a journal and looks absolutely incredible. Way out of my price range there, but I believe the... I think the numbered might even still be available online as well. That's a little bit fancier. Um, but, like I said, you can just get the trade edition of this from anywhere they sell books. The book is still in print. I mean, the book is uh, coming up on 30 years old, but it's, it's still in print. Or if you want a fancier cloth-bound edition such as this, you can go over to suntup.press and pick up a copy for yourself. Uh, like I said, it's 
A lot of Suntup titles are now selling below cover price, so you might even be able to get a good deal for uh, Zombie beneath cover price uh, somewhere out there on the secondary market over at, or on the Fans of Suntup uh, Facebook page. Anyways, I highly recommend this novel. It is creepy as all hell. And even if you, even if you don't spring for the fancier Suntup edition, if you have any fascination with serial killers or you want to read from the point of view of a serial killer or i think you should definitely check this out like i said it's it's a horror novel that is just uncomfortable to read and that's that's a very very interesting thing to have in horror i mean you got a lot of horror novels that kind of follow the same tropes and you're saying well i've read one i've read them all uh this one it made me uncomfortable which usually doesn't happen with these horror novels uh, so anyways, I'm going to do a book review a week, uh, or like last week, two book reviews in one week, because I missed the prior week, so please consider liking and subscribing. I also have a bunch of unboxing videos between here and there, such as various Sun Tup editions, so please consider subscribing, and we'll see you around next time.